In this video, I'm going to show you why I'm quite excited about the new array modifier within Blender 5. And we can take our fairly boring arrays, which are very uniform, and we can add lots of randomness to them and put them in a circle as well, and come up with some much more exciting designs. If you like what I do, then do check out the links in the description to more YouTube playlists and my more comprehensive courses. Also, it's Black Friday weekend, so you can get my courses as low as $5 in the bundles. Again, links in the description. Okay, let's start by looking at the two different array modifiers that are available. So with my default cube selected here, I'll press S then Z to scale it down to somewhere around here and S then Y to scale it in the Y axis. So we've got a kind of wooden plank here. I'm going to create a pathway. So I'll go to the modifier panel, which is the spanner down here, add modifier, and then type in array. Here's the new array at the top here, and we've got array legacy. Let's look at the old array so we can see what the differences are. So I'll click on the old array here, array legacy, and you can see it's duplicated the original object and it's added it along the X axis just here. I'll zoom out a bit so we can see that. They're touching each other so we can't see any gap between them. So it looks like it's just extended the length. But if I go to the relative offset here, you can see the X factor is on one. If I bring Bring that up to 1.1 that gives a slight gap let's increase the count as well so you can see that creates more of them and at the moment we're on fixed count so whatever we type in here that's the amount we'll have so a factor of one means that it will start the new one right at the end of the old one a factor of 1.1 will give a gap of well 10 percent of the original and i could increase the y and it will start going up in the y by clicking and dragging on the y factor and the z will go upwards kind of like some steps like so so I'll change both the X to zero and the Z to zero, and let's have it moving in the Y axis 1.1. So a little bit of a gap there, and we'll increase the count to 10. Now this looks great. We've got a nice pathway or platform or something like that of our wooden planks. The problem is though, that it looks really uniform and very unnatural because it's perfectly aligned. And we never really see that in the real world. You never get cuts that are exactly the same on every single plank, even when a machine's cutting it. So if I want to add a bit of variation to this, I might go into edit mode and let's edit the original. So control R to do a couple of loop cuts like this. So control R, use the wheel of my mouse, left click and left click again to set them and then rotate slightly so so it's a little bit warped, but then every single one afterwards is slightly warped. So they all look the same. And if I go in and let's say, select this edge here, control B to bevel, create a bevel like this, delete those faces, go to edge mode, select that end face there and fill those two in and then G them Y and bring that in. So we've got a little notch at the end there, but every single plank has that notch. So any variation I add, it's adding it to every single plank. And there's no way we can add variation to these. Or so there wasn't with the old array modifier. Now, if I go into object mode again, I'll duplicate this. So shift D to duplicate in the X axis, bring that across to the side here and get rid of the old array modifier, add modifier and start typing in array again. And let's choose the new one now. Now you'll notice straight away that we get these kind of gizmo things here, but it's actually very similar to the old one in many ways. So if I go to the old one here, we've got type fixed count just here, and you can change that to fit length and fit curve. If I go to the new one, we've got the shape instead. So we've got a line, a circle, a curve, and transform. So these are different objects that can affect the shape of our array. Let's keep it online for now, and I'll talk about the other ones in a moment. Let's change the offset once again from the X. So if I turn that down to zero, they'll all go to the middle here. And we've got a count of three at the moment. I'll change that to 10 and change the Y to 1.1 again. So at the moment, it's the same as the other one over here. However, the great thing is that we've got this randomize option here. And I think that's absolutely fantastic. I'll open that up and I'll tick on that. So first of all, we can randomize the offset. So that's the gap between them. So I'll bring that up slightly in the X. I'll bring it up slightly in the Y. So that's going to increase and decrease the distance between them. We might have too big a gap in some places, so I can go up to the top here and maybe decrease this to something like 0.01. I'll just experiment with that slightly. So 0.05 looks quite good, although we've got it touching a bit there but we can play with these values until we're happy with a little bit of gap between them, but not too much. And maybe a tiny bit of height difference as well might be quite fun. Can hardly see that there, but I'll bring it up very slowly and you can see a little bit of height difference, which is great. We can have some randomness in the rotation as well. And the best way is just to click on these and drag them across to see what different effects you can get. Have a little bit in the Y and a little bit in the Z. And you can see that randomness coming across in our path and that's making it much less uniform. 
The scale axis, you can actually change it from uniform, which is affecting everything. So if I move the scale now, it will affect all the axes, or you can actually change it to the individual axis here. And I might want more variation in the X axis, let's say, and less in the Y because I want the gaps between them, but perhaps a little bit more in the Z axis. So we've got different thicknesses like so. We've also underneath the scale got an option of flipping. And this is really interesting. So if you hover over it, it will tell you that it flips a fraction of the copies along individual axis. So if I say I want 50% flipped on the X axis, I can select this one and go 0.5. And you can see that five of them have been flipped on the X axis. So mirrored basically on the X axis. So if I change each of them to 0.5, that's changing 50% of them. And they're all flipping in the X, Y, and Z axis. So that notch that we have here here, you can see is in different places as we go through and that gives us some nice variation again. The only thing I would say about this is if we go to our overlays up here and turn on face direction, you can see it's actually flipped some of the face direction. That could be because my object origin is right in the center of my plank. And if I had the object origin to one side of it or one corner of it, then that might be okay. But it's something to be aware of. Just watch out that your face direction might be pointing the wrong way. That could matter when it comes to texturing and so forth. So I'll just turn that off. So that's the randomize option in the new array modifier that I think will mean that I'll use the array modifier much more. Because in the past, I didn't like this sort of uniformity, whereas now we can really randomize our arrays. Let's quickly talk about the offset method. If I turn off the randomize for the moment, I've got relative offset. So we mentioned that earlier, the offset being the distance between your objects. So in this case, it's just over one. So we've got a slight gap. If I change this to just offset, then you can actually type in the amount. So if I change from the translation of zero in the X to one meter in the Y, you can see there's a meter distance between them. And I'll just bring this up. So that's actually measuring a distance in meters between the start of the first one and the start of the second one. So that's the offset measured in meters here. You'll also notice that we've got this cross at the end. And if you click on that, you can drag it out. And with the two methods of relative and offset, that will change the count as you click and drag that out. Whereas endpoint, that brings my endpoint back to here. I'll change the count back to 10. And we can just drag this out and say exactly where we want the end point to be. So I'm dragging out in the Y 31 meters and it will then say that's where you want your end point. And you can use your gizmos here at the end to move that end point out. And you can actually use this gizmo to scale and rotate as well. But the end point being the point where you drag and move this ending to is how that offset method works. Okay, I'll just go back to relative and just reset my scale back to one and turn my randomize back on. So we've got our nice path back there. The other really useful aspect is the shape here. There's circle curve and transform. The transform is a bit like using an empty or an object to set the direction of the array. But the circle is a really interesting new one. So if I click on the circle here, you can see we've got a radius option here and I can bring out the radius and we've got a nice curve just there. Now this looks like it's not working. That's because my object has non-uniform scale when I scaled it right at the start. So if I press control A to apply the scale, you can see that going around in the correct circle. So just watch out for that. Make sure you apply your scale. To reiterate, if I press N on my keyboard, you can see my scale is now set to one. That's what happens when you press control A and apply the scale. So I'll press N on my keyboard to get rid of that. And I'll just turn this back to line and show you this on a new object. So let's go to my mushroom just here. You can see I've got some mushrooms that are in a circle. And if I click on that mushroom, you can see my array modifier is using a circle here and I can change the count and move that up. I can change the radius and move that outwards. And I'm using the randomize option down here to add lots of randomness to this. As you can see, I can change the scale or the Z rotation to randomize them. The other thing that's useful to know is the align rotation. So you can see that I've got my forward axis and an up and down axis. It's a bit confusing to think about this to start off with, but you should be able to just figure out what the different axis do. In my case here, it doesn't make too much difference which one I have forward, but it does obviously in terms of the up and down axis. So X will work, Z will work, but Y won't because it's pointing them in the other direction. And for my stone path here, you can see I've got another circle here. This time I've got the sweep angle and that's how far around the circle you can go. And that's created a really interesting path that goes around here. This is one that would work with the curve modifier as well. You need an actual curve object for that, much like the legacy array. But it's nice that we can easily have this option of a circle here. And if I just hide that, you can see there's my original object in the middle there. And 
I've made a nice path because of that. So you can see the usefulness of the array modifier now. Rather than having this extremely uniform array, we can now have lots of variation to our arrays and we can create far more interesting arrays. So hopefully that's given you some ideas with the new array modifier and you can see why I'm fairly excited about the new additions. If you've got any questions, then do comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.